Live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering Boomi World 19. Brought to you by Boomi. Welcome to theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Lisa Martin with John Furrier. We're at Boomi World 19 in Washington, D.C. Pleased to welcome one of Boomi's award winners to the program from Gilead Sciences. We have the director of IT, Morelli Anakavor. Welcome, Morelli, and congratulations on Gilead being the 2019 Change Agent Award winner for North America. Thank you so much, Lisa. It's good to receive the award. A lot of efforts have been put in place by our folks, so I'm very honored and privileged to receive this award. Fantastic, so give our audience an overview of Gilead Sciences, sure. what you guys do, and then we'll start getting into the IT infrastructure and all of the great things that you have done with Boomi. Definitely, um, Gilead has been in the forefront of uh, meeting unexpected medical needs of patients worldwide. And uh, Gilead is the company, um, if you recollect, uh, solved the hepatitis C problem in the world. They were the cure, found the cure for it. And uh, that started the company and you know, originally to come up to where they are today. They are in the forefront of uh, science and R&D and technology and pouring therapeutics for inflammatory, infectious, and recently in big cancer treatments and RA treatments. So the world is opening up big time. Our focus is to resolve unmet medical needs. The company is so focused and they want to be they want to be probably the cure for all this. And it's so uh, so passionately too, there's all kinds of R&D going on. I'm so honored to be working for a company which is uh, doing this great need for humanity, frankly. Absolutely, so the cure for hepatitis C, that's huge. We, whenever we talk about technology where it, it impacts every single person on this planet, infectious diseases, cancer as you mentioned, it, it's really, it's, Pulverizing, people understand it. It's, gra it's you know, there's a lot of gravity around it. Talk to us about what you needed to implement from a technology infrastructure perspective to connect all of these different data sources, so that the next cure for all these different diseases has a foundation from which right. providers can actually, you know, yeah. glean data. Obviously, I'll talk about it. There are some backend services company, any company needs, like say ERP system. I need some CRM system. Those are good, but our company has the complexity of manufacturing systems that needs to make medicines. Company has complexities of lab systems, R&D systems, and product lifecycle management systems where things originate in a little molecule for the compound they call it, and it expands into what is a clinical studies on a medicine. So you can imagine the plethora of systems that make this happen. So, what happens in this environment is now people spring up systems for the, what they need, and ERP does what they need, and all of a sudden, I, I can't do without customer data, I can't do without my patient data, I can't do without my item data. How do I get the data? So it becomes, begs the question like, oh my gosh, okay, we got all these complex systems in place, how are we going to share the data? Who is the master? What's the source of truth? Right. So all those are begging questions that uh, kind of start up the landscape of integration, right? So that's where we are. Uh, launched that um, uh, previous uh, legacy systems for SOA that we have currently, it's mostly, uh, e call it the ESP Enterprise Service Plus, it shares data within the premises. Now guess what today? They want, hey, I've got this cloud system that I'm accessing. I've, I'm going to buy this, uh, Salesforce commercial system that's going to enable me to launch my commerce market better. How do I deal with these guys? How do I reach out to those folks? How do I, how do I make my engagement app on the events for doctors? How do I connect with my patients? So all these are big questions that's been asked. So there was a need for a system that will kind of take care of all these diverse platforms in the cloud, on-prem, connect them together, so that the data sharing and happens. So that was the biggest challenge um, that we are trying to solve right now. And then with Boomi coming on to uh, our platforms in a couple of years from uh, in the past, we have uh, matured it to a place where we're going to launch a lot of things on Boomi and we are looking forward to it eagerly to consolidate all those legacy integration platforms into uh, the Boomi world infrastructure. So it's exciting. Talk about the IT landscape in your company. 
what's what's going on there? How's it structured? What does some of the environment look like? Sure. Is it transforming the roles of the people? Stacking and racking, is it cloud, hybrid? What, talk about your environment. Fantastic, I think it's a great question getting into our pillars of what we do in IT, right? Our pillars are very simple, right? First thing is core services. You got to make keep the lights on, you got to make sure things are working fine. The next thing we adhere to is people. So who do we need to make all this happen? IT's people, knowledge management, retain people, the best talent, get the best talent. The third pillar we have is the, the enabling of technology. And that's where some of us come in to enable us. How do I migrate to cloud? Let's say we have a big data platform on, on a, an infrastructure, um, Adobe infrastructure, Teradata infrastructure on-prem. And uh, you know what, it's a plain space, so we, the data growth is enormous these days. So we are talking about cloud. We are already have plans, we already have infrastructure in cloud that we're moving to. So if you look at it, the company is so focused not only on technology, which is required to, in this day and age, to talking about data, talking about expansion, elasticity, and the computing power you need, yeah, there we are, we're adopting, we will be a multi-cloud, uh, you know, uh, recipient and beneficiary, but at the same time we're also focusing on people and the core services we provide is IT. IT is technical, not so you technical. have multiple clouds right now? Exactly. Amazon, Azure? Yep, we, we will have a multi-cloud uh, eventually. Not that everything is online and in production, but our plan is to have a multi-cloud strategy going forward because of uh, the amount of things that come into our uh, <laughs> landscape. You're a classic hybrid right now. You got a lot on-premises, yes. some cloud going on. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's talk about business transformation, digital transformation. You did a great job of articulating the business challenge, the, well, rather the challenges right. that you needed to solve. From an IT perspective, you have all of the you know hybrid multi-cloud environment. Where did the the digital transformation initiative come from? Was it the business saying, we have so much data in disparate systems, yes. we want to be solving more real world problems. Hey, IT, help us build a foundation that allows that. It's, it's, it's fantastic, if you look at our company, our CFO talks about digital transformation. Not just IT, our COO, CEO talks about our digital transformation. So everybody, in fact, it was question, hey, we want to be digital. What does it mean to be digital, right? The question comes up. So in the landscape of ITVR, we are going to be a digital enabled company. We're going to define what it means. Uh, to me, personally, digital enablement means, A, I need to share a piece of data across the landscape, whoever needs it, whenever they need it, however they need it. That's called the digital transformation, if you ask me, because that enables other systems to consume it and then provide the care and attention it needs, be it our customers customers of patients, be it our hospitals that we work with, they are our customers. Employees are customers, intranet, uh, you know, it could be your portal. So we are attacking it from multiple points of view. We want to make sure the technology enablement and moving forward in innovation, we care for all these areas of uh, our customers where we can really digitally enable them. So the focus is not just on one point of digitalization, it's customers, or patients, how can we give them access, how can you get the feedback? All of them fall into 360 degree view of uh, data enablement. So it's so focused and um, we are so thrilled to have such leadership that can um, pay a lot of attention to all these things. And uh, I think it'll be a transforming our company a big time in the next few years uh, with the digitization we're looking forward to. Mobile applications, all kinds of things are coming out, so. So why Boomi? Boomi is a cloud native platform. Uh, we, we saw the video, I don't know if you saw the technical keynote yes. this morning, that the first video started up with a few minutes of all the areas in which they were first. But they took this big bet back in 2007 when they were founded, they are this single instance, yep. multi-tenant cloud application. What differentiated Boomi when you guys were looking for the right partner with which to standardize? It's, uh, it's interesting because uh, we like the cloud part, at the same time, uh, being a very compliance or in country in the industry, we said, I can't really put it on the cloud. I mean, that's, this was about four years back, remember, things were not really stable at that time, or people are wondering, what cloud, Should I, can I put my data? So we chose the Boomi hybrid model, which is awesome because it gave us the benefit of both. Our metadata is cloud, and take care of everything that you need to do metadata. 
I'm taking care of my processing on site. So that gave us that bang, say, oh wow, that's a fantastic option to have. It's a very thin infrastructure. It's, it's, it, it, people can build things faster on-prem, run your case, data cases on-prem, but your cloud metadata is protecting your deployment, everything is easy, it's managed by them, it's HA. So all those were factors when we decided uh, to go into Boomi. We did do a uh, POC among others as well, but then the speed to market, less code framework, and, and, the, and also the uh, roadmap they'll add for them, right? That's very important for us. I'm investing in the technology, I want it to go for the next five years, 10 years. Are you walking with me in the technology? Are you making insights as we talked about today? <laughs> I'm just paraphrasing it. But those are the things that matter to us. So, so that our, our investment is protected. We don't end up with some debt, right? Like, uh, like, the, like the monolith platforms that we have today. Right. So. So those were our key factors in moving forward with Dell Boeing, so. And so let's talk about some of the business outcomes. You mentioned sure. a few, but let's look at them kind of categorically. If we look at kind of this over, this polarizing um, industry, yeah. being able to study different, a spectrum of diseases and identify cures sure. for them, hopefully. What are some of the business outcomes that you guys are achieving so far with the Your Change Agent Award winner. So give us some of those really big wins that sure. you've seen to date. So how do you be proactive, right? It's, it's a game, it's a data game these days. So the more data you have about the, uh, the decision you can make, it's, you're going to be a differentiator in solving problems and being competitive as well. So, so we, are, we are trying to, uh, to see these aspects in the data that we can collect from all places. Now once you have the data, you need some kind of integration that needs to happen to process the data, to, to serve the data to people who need them. That's where the integration comes in. Obviously there are other, other areas where we do big data processing. We need to have some kind of a cluster to compute them and give some analytics for scientists to see, hey, I got this data, this was the inference and now we can introduce that integration to give them all the data that they need. What used to take, in my opinion, days and months to infer through these files and piles of data, takes less than 10 minutes for people to now infer. So okay, dramatic I, speed improvements here, wow. Elaborate on that a little bit. And what happens is, uh, it's when you get this huge epidemiology data on the world, right? You got uh, thousands and thousands of terabytes of data. Now, Without proper computing and the resources and the, and the modern platform, it is tough for you to crunch those data to come out with some analytics that your people can use. You, you can ask queries like, hey, this disease happens in this area, tell me the percentage that is uh, uh, you know, relevant to this disease in this area that I need to concentrate on in solving the problem. So you want to solve big problems and you want to make sure the population benefits from that. So this kind of data gives you those inferences that people can, can research on. They say, hey, I'm going to focus on this area, it's very predominant. In let's say Africa and Asian population is the, amounts to about three billion, four billion people in the world. So let's focus on that disease, let's get some um, uh, traction going on, and then that's how you solve the world's problem, one by one, one step at a time. I'm so happy to be involved in that kind of enablement because I'm a thin, I'm a very, very minuscule part of the whole deal. Because we work with scientists who are, who are fantastic, who are biologists, who are researchers. So our act in this helps them get to what they need to do. We are complete, um, completely at their service for what they need and then we just want to enable things for them, make things faster, make the outcomes for them on R&D to be more clearer. So that's where we come in. It's more like a service but industry aspect within the company, but then we are for fortunate to work for a company that cures diseases, and we are part of that uh, journey that uh, they're going through, so. You've just articulated beautifully why you guys won the change age, in the change agent category. Morali, that was outstanding. Congratulations on what you've achieved so far, and so I'm much. sure I'm excited to hear next year where the business Definitely. goes. We appreciate yep. your time. Thanks a lot, Lisa. Nice to talk to you guys too. Likewise, Thanks. thank yeah. you. For John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from Boomi World 19.